New York Governor Elliot Spitzer has been in office for nine months. He sat down with Bloomberg's Alan Dodds Frank this week at the state capitol in Albany for his first wide ranging television interview. Alan began by asking the governor how the subprime mortgage crisis has affected New York State and what, if anything, can be done about it. First, obviously, there are many individuals who had uh, purchased or had taken out subprime mortgages and are now being victimized by the untoward ways in which they were marketed. And so we are concerned first and foremost with those consumers of the product who are stuck with mortgages. Many have, are facing the prospect of losing their homes. Uh, some have already lost their homes. And so we are trying to do something at a state level to remedy that with state financing uh, that can come in as a bridge to protect those consumers. It has affected the larger economy which has a ripple effect that obviously touches New York. Housing prices in the New York City metro area appear to be relatively more stable than prices elsewhere. But of course, we are always worried about any decline in asset value that would affect all of New Yorkers. It has affected the overall economy, the entire uh, ripple effect of the subprime market to the credit squeeze, and of course, where there's direct causation, who knows, but on through the economy, uh, which has a direct impact on the uh, Wall Street economy, which affects not only the job growth in New York City and New York State, but also the revenues we will get as a state that derive from that, that economic uh, uh, impact. So it's affected us at many different levels, and we are facing, as a consequence of this and the larger economic shifts, a uh, potential budget deficit of $4 billion. Now, do you think there's fraud involved in the subprime crisis? Well, let, let me answer it more precisely. Is there some element of fraud in the way subprime mortgages have been marketed? Absolutely. And, and when I was Attorney General, we made some cases in that domain. Do I think that the largest part of this is a result of fraud? That I certainly couldn't answer. And honestly, I doubt it. I think that really what you have here is the overly aggressive marketing of subprime products that may have been legal, but certainly was misguided and wrong from a policy perspective. And what it has generated is a lot of uh, excess uh, uh, froth in the marketplace and harm to individuals. You mentioned a $4 billion deficit in the upcoming budget. How much of that's due to Wall Street's declining earnings, and what can you do about that? Well, some of it is projected as a result of less revenue, tax revenue from uh, Wall Street, where, of course, it's all hypothetical. We are, uh, we wish Wall Street well under any circumstances, but also to the extent that their bonuses and, and Wall Street thrives. Obviously, th those who depend upon it do well. Um, some of it, obviously, is an expectation that that may be a little less, uh, uh, there may be a little less revenue from that source. And what we can do about it, we're doing everything we can to maintain New York City and New York State is the financial capital of the world. Now, there's not a lot we can do at a macroeconomic level. I'm not the Fed, and you know, obviously, uh, uh, the chairman is doing everything he can with the global issues. All we can do is try to maintain New York State's place in the financial world. And on that score, we're doing a great deal to rationalize our regulatory framework. OK. Now, your energy policy embraces the notion of cleaner energy and all that sort of stuff. Yet you seem to want to close down the nuclear power plants as quickly as possible. How do you square that? O only one. And that, that one is IP2 Indian Point 2, which is sited right in the heart of Westchester. I guess it's technically on the edge of Westchester on the Hudson River. But in the heart of a densely populated area with no, I hate to say this, no plausible evacuation uh, that is possible. I, anybody who knows the region, who has seen 287, which is the interstate that goes east-west uh, across the uh, Hudson River at that point, on any given rush hour, knows that the notion that you could get people to evacuate in the event of some event that, that required it simply couldn't happen. And so in that context, it's a poorly cited plant. Now, if your question is in the context of global warming, and we are, as a, as a state, very progressive on that, and we'll be doing many things in the near future. Should we have a debate, once again, about nuclear power in the context of global warming, where, as compared to coal, it certainly is preferable? That is a discussion we should have. And I think many environmental groups are beginning to acknowledge that and open up the conversation again, a uh, conversation that 15, 20 years ago was limited to how do we get clean coal, natural gas, wind, solar efficiency, uh, geothermal. Now I think nuclear as a discussion point, certainly we need to ask the question, does it in this new environment make sense? So you're not willing, coming out and saying, well, you 
would support nuclear power plants somewhere else, but you'd like to at least talk about it. Well, certainly we have to talk about it. We have nuclear power in New York State. We have a fair number of ongoing uh, operating plants that, uh, that, that we want to keep operating, and, and there are arguments. People are discussing expanding them not frivolous conversations, and uh, so we'll participate in those conversations. Uh, in Oswego, there is, is, is a plant that, where there is a discussion about expanding it. The community there is supportive of that, and that's a conversation we will have. Indian Point 2 is, is simply cited in a very uh, you know, inappropriate place. When we come back, Governor Spitzer discusses the controversy surrounding his aide's efforts to have the state Senate's Republican leader investigated. Stay tuned. Welcome back. Now, more of Alan Dodd Frank's exclusive interview with Elliot Spitzer. The New York governor has been mired in controversy lately about his aides trying to instigate an investigation of a Republican opponent. Frank asked the governor what, if anything, he would change about his first nine months in office. You've been in Albany nine months now. Right. If you were starting over, is there anything you'd do differently? Well, I'll answer it this way. I don't think at the end of any given day I could answer the question other than, of course, there's something I would do differently today. Are there things I would do differently over nine months? You bet. Would I in any way change the priorities I brought to Albany, the dedication to challenging the status quo, investing in education, holding tax rates down, and reformulating health care? Not at all. Um, have we made progress in all those? You bet. Are there other things that we would have, I would have preferred to see move in a different direction? Of course. But if you're saying, am I pleased with the way things have gone. I could not be happier with the policy accomplishments and the landscape that we are creating for rebuilding New York State. Okay. Well, you came in with a reputation as a reformer, and, and now as you're in almost your third month of controversy about your aides allegedly trying to instigate an investigation of the state Senate majority leader. How could this happen? I mean, what did they do wrong other than getting caught? I'm not going to, well, no, first I'd suggest that people read the report that was issued by the DA, uh, DA Soares of Albany. I think they may conclude it's not so clear what, if anything, they did. It certainly did, they did nothing that was illegal. That was clearly found by every investigative agency. And what the DA also said very clearly was what they did was within their power to do. And we're dealing here with an issue of understanding how public resources were used. Now, all that being said, as a reformer, we have passed lobbying reform, ethics reform. We have passed on the cusp of passing campaign finance reform for the first time in 30 years. So the reform agenda that I laid out has been critical. And we have been enormously successful in getting that through in a city that has been hesitant to embrace reform. And so I feel, again, very happy with where that is going. And, you know, this issue, again, read, people should read that document and draw their own conclusions. Well, the DA certainly said there have been no violations of law. Right. But as a public opinion matter, it's slightly different. I mean, wouldn't you put it all to rest if you testified under oath in public? Look, I've answered every question and, and, and done that to, and, and answered every question that's conceivable. And the DA report is very clear that there is absolutely no issue about what I do, said, did, et cetera, although that is now being carried by some purely as, as a political matter, those who want to keep a status quo that was broken, they've politicized the issue, somewhat akin to the way the Ken Stars and the Newt Gingriches did, which is fine. I mean, that those are That's my question. Do you think play. the Republicans are going to try to keep this alive forever to diminish okay. your impact on the national stage? I'm not going to speculate about motives that others might have. I, I've always found that to be you know, not only hard to do, but usually fruitless. All I know is that what I'm going to focus on is the issues that the public does care about, which is continuing to rebuild our economy, investing in education and reforming health care, and building and bringing the jobs back to western New York, which is where we desperately need them. Final question. Is one of those going to be what you consider to be the singular initiative of your administration? It's too early to... Uh, to, to pick the singular initiative, I think, if I needed to give you one overarching objective, it is to rebuild an economy that for decades and indeed centuries had defined the, the, the dynamism of American capitalism. Right now, 
the past decade, we have not been that. New York City is a unique engine of growth. The rest of the state has not been. So that is the objective. We are doing it with multiple policies that are designed to bring back jobs, capital, people, invest in, 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 our, in our workforce, educate our, our public. All of those things are beginning to happen, and they're crystallizing in a way that I think will be viewed as a long-term success. The controversy, however, continues. A Republican majority in the state Senate promises an investigation, and the State Ethics Commission is still looking into the accusations. Coming up, Advanced Medical Optics gets a vote of confidence from NASA, which approves a company's LASIK surgery equipment for use on astronauts. But what does that mean for the company? You'll hear from CEO James Mazzo next on Bloomberg Weekend News.